Hey everyone, in this video I want to show a little um, nice trick I found out in, in a Motion Builder. Um, and to demonstrate this I will be using a little um, a motion clip I made earlier on today. Um, so this is basically just me taking a little side step. And as you can see I have my character here, my uh, UE4 character and I exported this just a minute ago um, to this IPy sidestep. I'll just do it again. And inside Motion Builder, um, I have my uh, template for this my SK Mannequin IPy and BUE4, uh, which I believe I will. Um, make available as a download because I don't think that anything in it is uh, protected by any special copyrights or whatever. So um, I'll put the link uh, in the description um, after um, so you can download this if you're interested in this stuff. Anyway, so um, I also went ahead and um, exported the third person idle animation. Um, this one, uh, which I hope you recognize, just uh, our usual guy idling. And then I'm also going to import the clip that we just made, the IPy side step, and merge that as well. And that's a little side step here. So what I wanted to demonstrate really is, um, let's say I wanted um, this animation to blend into this animation. Uh, one thing to note is that, um, actually two things. Uh, one thing especially is I uh, accidentally went, uh, went with the right foot for, uh, in front and uh, the idle animation. It's the left foot in front. So I need to start off by mirroring this. And the other thing is um, I'm not standing in the same position. So the blend will make a little uh, slide in, in any way. So in order to get around this, I'm going to uh, assume the pose from the idle um, uh, animation so that it will the blend will be uh, looking better. And to do this, I will be using the post controls. So um, I'll get back to this in a moment. So anyway, um, first off, let me take my character here and under characters, I have my UE4 mannequin character, uh, which is currently driven by the IPy character, which has the animation. So I'm gonna start off by plotting this to my control rig. And actually I forgot one thing. Uh, let's do that again. Uh, my character and on the mirror animation on the modifiers mirror animation I'm gonna tick this and then I'm gonna plot this to my control rig and once that's done I'm gonna turn it off so I don't accidentally keep it okay so I just need to turn him around 180 now I'm just gonna do that real quick by adding a character animation track select my UE4 character and inserting the current take and turn on the the ghost and enter 180 up here just going to turn him around i look a little weird though but anyway um once that's done i can just uh plot this back there we go so now i turned off story again and we can see that the, the animation is driven uh, by the control rig uh, correctly um, without the story. So um, to get back to the post that we want to start with and end with, um, let's start off by uh, finding the post we want. So now I'm on the Unreal Take 1 and as we can see nothing is uh, happening right now and that's because the um, the, the control rig is driven, is active, and is, uh, it doesn't have any animation on it right now. Um, if we switch to the character, 
we have the IPy character which has animation. So I'm gonna plot that. Um, oops, stop that and plot this to the control rig. There we go. So now the control rig is active and uh, the animation is driven by that. Um, so we want to get a pose. I'm just gonna get the the first frame pose. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, they are almost identical. It's a little movement in between. Uh, but anyway, um, so this pose here, um, I'm going to be using in the other take. So I'm going to switch to the IPy default take, which has uh, this animation. It's a little sidestep. And I'm going to go to the first frame and on my animation layer one, I'm going to make sure to turn off translation. And I'm going to double click my pose. So it's going to put him at the center and it's also going to put him in the idle animation pose. So from here on, I'm going to select something and then set a key. Make sure to select uh, an effect of just any one uh, and I'm on full body, so it's going to set a full body key. And then uh, I'm going to scroll to the end. And here I can actually just if I click uh, the pose again, he's going to jump back. Um, so that's not what I want. I want it to match up with something which is stable uh, on the ground. So at this point, I believe my right foot is supposed to be pretty stable. So I select the right foot and then I turn on the translation, make sure X, Y and C are enabled. And then I double click my pose again. That's going to put him uh, right there and then I'm going to set a key so once I play this back again I have uh, an animation looking like this starting in uh, the idle pose and ending in the idle pose but still taking a little sidestep so I think that's a nice little trick to know uh, when you what you can use the pose controls for as an example um, so one thing you want to do to finish this off, uh, first of all, you want to merge this down. So you have uh, the new animation on one layer. Uh, and that's um, to go ahead and clean up the foot sliding. As you can see, the feet are sliding as a, as a consequence of, the, of that um, merge in between these two poses. So even though I was standing pretty still with my foot, uh, it's now it's not going to be sliding a little bit. So I'm just going to show um, one um, one foot um, how I would clean this up. And um, to begin with, let's take these two. So I'm going to control select them and unpin them. And I'm going to turn down the translate and rotate for them. And then I'm going to, since I want to now um, work on the, on the toe effectors. I'm going to control click these and turn up the, uh, the translate that I use for these. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do next is go to my F curves and uh, translation and with the toe effector selected, I'm going to hit uh, click this area down here and hit A. Um, I want to make sure I only have one of them. And we can see uh, the beginning here should be uh, flat all the way around and also the end should be flat and they're definitely not flat. Um, and by the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm holding down my Alt key and my middle button to drag around. And then um, if I want to zoom in and out, I hold down my right mouse button, move to the side and up and down for this axis all the, the time while I hold it down the old key. Okay, um, so the beginning frame has the correct pose. It has uh, the pose where uh, uh, from the, the idle pose here. So I'm going to copy that frame and I'm going to look for the time where I think uh, my character was supposed to start moving the foot. So that's going to be here. Whoops. Uh, go to copy. Copy and paste. And then I'm going to delete 
everything in between and select the first and the last of this and then select the uh, flat. It's going to cause a little jump in all the, uh, the curves, uh, the axes, but that's something we'll take a look at uh, next uh, or in a moment. But uh, before that, I'm going to find the moment in time where the foot lands. I think it's about here. Usually, uh, it's a good thing to both look at the animation and but also look at the curves. So I think the curves tells me that it should be here. I keep doing that wrong. Uh, copy this and paste this, and then remove everything in between and flatten that. Okay, and. Then I'm going to take one axis at a time. So I'm uh, selecting uh, my axis here and I'm pressing A to frame, frame up on, uh, on everything. And then it seems like um, this one needs to be raised a little bit. And this one needs to be lowered a little bit. Hitting the Y and hitting A. And this one looks weird. Um, I think I'm going to start off by pushing this one down uh, right. I guess this is okay and <clears throat> the C axis looks like something close to this. Let's take a look at that now. So <clears throat> hopefully you can see now the foot is standing still, except the heel is moving a little bit, but that's something I won't be covering in this uh, short video. Um, but anyway, uh, once you have all this done, you can just, um, if you want to take this into Unreal Engine, <clears throat> um, just select your, uh, make sure to plot everything and um, plot your character to the skeleton. And then you're just ready to ex motion for export this. So I'm just going to do this. I already did this uh, once, as you can see. Um, I'm going to put it out here. And then make sure to select um, IPy default take. There we go. And then if you bring this into, I've just got a blank template project here. Maybe not that one. Um, let's just take my uh, climbing um, example here I'm working on. Um, so just import. This one into your mannequin character. Now you have a character taking a side step. So that's uh, the full workflow of how to quickly uh, create uh, a nice little uh, extra animation in case uh, you don't have exactly what you want by using the post controls inside Motion Builder. Hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye bye.